Hey eBay friends, it's Suzanne A. Wells. Thank you for coming back for another video. And this video is a little bit different, so um, I'm, I'm proving a point here. So if you'll just hang with me, you'll see where this is going. Um, basically, this is the truth about what's going on with thrift store clothing. And this is not to scare you, but to educate you. So I'm going to prove to you, you need to be washing these clothes before you sell them. And that also goes for anything out of a thrift store that's made of fabric, whether it's plush or linens, sheets, towels, anything like that needs to be washed. So please stay till the end of the video so you can see all of this. I'm presenting this as like a case with evidence. <laughs> so um, here we go. There is a lot of misinformation and bad advice on the internet about everything, not just eBay. And some people giving this advice may, may not know any better. But misinformation about eBay is really disturbing to me because it misleads people and it can affect their business, which then affects your livelihood. So it's all about keeping your business healthy and making as most the most money you can. So this video is intended to educate and inform and to help you be a better seller. Now, some sellers say they sell thrift store clothing without washing it, and this is wrong on many levels. Okay, so here we are at Exhibit A. Really, the only reason you need to wash thrift store clothing is because eBay says you have to. I will put the link to this below the video, uh, but eBay's used clothing policy says most used clothing can be sold as long as it has been cleaned. The seller states that the item is used and there's no inappropriate content. So they're, they're saying right here it needs to be cleaned. Now, let's go to Exhibit B. We're going to start off with some facts and the truth from a former Goodwill store manager. These comments came from a YouTuber who commented on another video I made, and the link is right here at the top of the page if you want to go look at that video. Uh, his name is Delonega Gold Off Grid Primitive. Uh, this, I don't even know if this is a he or a she, but he's they say not to gross anybody out, but having been a Goodwill manager, here's the lowdown. Some of the items are left in tractor trailers for a year. Not only can there be mold and mildew concerns, you can also get scabies from this clothing. Never buy anything from there without washing it. And I asked him to elaborate on that, and he said, Goodwill obtains merchandise from three different places. If it is clothing that comes in the donor door, there's a strong possibility it is clean. Maybe. If it comes from a nearby donation center, the item may be clean when it is donated, but by the time it reaches the store, it wouldn't be. The third source are tractor trailers that may sit for up to a year in a large parking area in Atlanta. And I'm in Atlanta and I know where this is. That's the scary one. Just because an item looks clean doesn't mean it hasn't been stored beside something molded or unclean. So you get that cross-contamination. Goodwill discards probably half of the clothing they receive because of condition. It is actually sold to make clothes. The clothes are checked twice for obvious stains and so on. However, one manager didn't check the clothes at all when I worked there. Goodwill sprays a fabric spray on the clothing. Items are rotated by the color of the plastic barb in the clothing. After four weeks, yellow, blue, red, and green, the clothing is pulled and sold to another thrift or overseas, or I think it may even go to the Goodwill bins in other states because we don't have them in the Atlanta area. The point is that none of the clothing is on the sales floor for over four weeks. I believe America's Thrift buys from Goodwill. It is probably a good idea to wear vinyl gloves when shopping there for clothing. I have bought many clothes from them but always washed them first. And then he says, Goodwill employees are not allowed to shop at the store they work out. This is why you have a good selection to choose from. So here he is telling us that the storage may be an issue um, and things are just, you know, clean things are put next to nasty things. So Exhibit C is going to be my personal experience helping a nonprofit sell donated items on eBay. Um, I had volunteered for many years with the Cherokee County Humane Society um, in Metro Atlanta and that has been my cause probably for 25 years and they opened a thrift store at one point and so I volunteered to help them sell their better items on eBay. So I would go to the store every week or so and help them sort through donations and 
educate them on what to mark up as well as I sold some things for them. So this is the store and then over here on the right is a tractor trailer where they kept things and here's another view of it so you can see that tractor trailer here and they have what's called I think they called it a pack rat but it's like a pod um, portable on-demand storage that you can store stuff in and here's another view of it with the tractor trailer and I don't think the pod is there at this time they may have moved it so anyway um, the overflow was kept in the tractor trailer or the pod because they got so many donations people love their animals and they wanted to donate to the Humane Society so we would get entire houses full of stuff um, you know somebody would leave in their will all of their stuff to the Humane Society thrift store to sell to raise money for the animals but my daughter and I were told never to go into the tractor trailer or the pod because there were rats rat droppings snakes spiders and all kinds of stuff and uh, they just like don't go in there you just go through the stuff that's coming right in the donation door they let the community community service volunteers who were doing um, like you know when you get a DUI you have to do community service or uh, you know nonviolent crimes where people were on probation and had to do community service through the um, the county uh, detention center they were assigned to sort through the stuff in the trailer in the pod so we never went in there um, so if you've never seen rat droppings this is what they look like um, you know this this is the kind of stuff that's going on in these tractor trailers that stuff is stored in for you don't even know how long it doesn't necessarily just come in the donor door and hit the sales floor in two hours it could be put somewhere for a really long time in storage and when you have rats you get rat babies and this is really gross I mean they have a nice cozy place to have their babies and rats can multiply really fast so um, that's pretty gross and um, some of the clothes and items were in bags and others were in cardboard boxes well roaches love cardboard so this is a problem in the south you may not have this issue where you are but um, down here we do and roaches reproduce really fast too so um, and then we have spiders they also love little cozy places to build a nest and make eggs and this is what a spider nest of eggs looks like um, so this could be in the clothes uh, in a box next to stuff that you have bought and um, you know all this stuff is out there or you could even get the whole spider um, so you know black widows they're out there and they love to hide in boxes um, people in the grocery industry talk about them all the time how they're in cardboard boxes um, you know a black widow bite means a trip to the ER so that could happen to you or your your children or your pets and then you know a brown recluse spider also is not a fun guest so these bites can get really infected and they can kill you so depending on how the thrift store you shop at stores clothing inside or outside in a tractor trailer in a pod you know you don't know that and there could be all kind of things in that clothing um, that you don't know about so the other part of this is that you can't see where roaches rats and spiders have been so then you get that problem of cross-contamination maybe the item you bought was sitting next to something that had rat droppings on it for six months and it's contaminated with that um, and this is you know I'm not even mentioning cigarette smoke mothballs mites all these other things that get in there so maybe the item you are selling looks clean but it could have been next to something really disgusting for a long time so when people are saying oh I only buy the clean things to resell um, <laughs> just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not clean so we're going to move on to exhibit D where we're going to talk about the black light test and this is another th thing um, more things you can't see just by looking at an item so in case you aren't aware a black light shined on something uh, clothing carpet furniture the couch will show um, organic material which is also known as bodily fluids 
I'm not going to get real specific here, but you can use your imagination and figure out what I'm talking about. So we've all seen the re reports on TV about hotel sheets and bedspreads where they claim to have changed them and then the person, investigative reporter, goes in with a black light and we see the presence, the evidence of bodily fluids on stuff that was supposed to have been washed. Um, guess what? That stuff is on donated clothing too. There's a blog post, which I will put the link to below, um, about a one-day intervention in a Salvation Army thrift store in downtown Toronto. The store's regular lighting fixtures were replaced with CSI-style ultraviolet lights, directing attention toward the residue of previous owners. The gesture brought to the forefront the lint, bodily fluids, spills, and stains covering the used garments, invisible under normal lighting and invisible to the naked eye. So just because you can't see something gross or disgusting doesn't mean it's not on there. So these are some pictures from that blog post showing where the clothing just had all kinds of stuff on it that you couldn't see under regular light. And um, so this guy here is inspecting a pair of pants and I'm not going to really get into that. Um, but if if you don't believe me, do it on your own. I'm not going to do it here because I'll just get accused of staging this and making all this up. Um, so do it on your own. And you can go and get a black light flashlight from Walmart. They have them everywhere. And they're usually, they might be in the pet section. Sometimes they come with um, some of those pet products for cleaning carpet so that you can make, you can see what's there and then clean it. Um, so you could try that. And try it on some of your thrift store clothing and see what you find out. Then we have Exhibit E. Um, folks that talk about going to the Goodwill bins who won't touch anything in there without gloves, okay, are the same people who don't wash the clothes. So this really confuses me. Um, I, I want someone to explain this to me in the comments, please. Um, so the things you're buying to resell, things that you're bringing into your home around your children and your pets are right next to things you won't touch with your bare hands. So how does that work? Um, you know, the bins are crazy. I've never been, but I've seen enough about it on the internet and on TV and talked to people that, um, you know, there are people that will not go in there without gloves because you just don't know what's in there. So Explain to me how do these things suddenly and magically become clean by the time you get them home when you won't touch them in the store without gloves on. I'm confused on that one. Um, okay, so then we have Exhibit F, which are the people who go commando and don't wear underwear. And um, there are actually TV commercials promoting this, so we know it happens. Cottonelle's got this commando commercial, you know, so... People are doing it. So if you're selling pants, jeans, shorts, athletic wear, um, you know, undergarments, stuff like that, you may be touching an unwashed item that was worn by someone who had no underwear on. And a lot of people don't wear underwear under athletic clothing. I'm not going to show you pictures, but you may remember the Lululemon fiasco a few years ago where uh, Lululemon's yoga pants were kind of see-through and there's pictures on the internet um, you know people that were not wearing underwear so just know this is going on out there so now is time for you to run don't walk to your laundry room and wash that thrift store clothing because I hope I've convinced you that just because it looks clean doesn't mean it is and I really want to encourage you to share this video on your groups or as a comment on other YouTube videos where people may be encouraging you to not wash the clothing because maybe they honestly in all seriousness don't know this goes on. They may think it looks clean and you know I've shown you that it's not. So I would love your comments. <laughs> Let's just comment away on this. Um, like this video, subscribe, and do please share this so that uh, we can help educate other people about the right way to do an eBay business and things they may be bringing into their home that they don't even realize. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.